the original film script of Laurel and Hardy. I'm Adam Douglas of Peter Harrington, and I'd like to show you this fabulous collection um, of Laurel and Hardy screenplays from the Hal Roach Studios, the golden age of Laurel and Hardy. Uh, the Hal Roach Studios were in California, and uh, they were turned in the 50s into a car showroom, and all their files were just tossed out into the street. And these scripts were rescued. They're the file copies from the Hal Roach studio. And they record the earliest career of the, the, the golden age of Laurel and Hardy. Basically, uh, Stan Laurel had been hired and fired twice by Hal Roach when he finally was introduced to Babe Hardy and came up with some of the winning formulas that they would turn into comedy gold over the next few years. As soon as they did that, as soon as they were going to be successful, uh, Hal Roach seems to have realized that he needed to keep a record of this, presumably because he was paying Laurel. And so the file copy started. So we have some of the earliest films here are even before proper Laurel and Hardy films. They are uh, films, some of them in which Babe Hardy acted, but not all of them. What's interesting about them is these earliest ones are silent shorts. For silent shorts, and film historians who've written about Laurel and Hardy don't, don't seem to have seen these at all, because they keep wondering whether there was a script. Well, this proves that there definitely was a scenario. It's not a script, of course, it's a silent film. But actually, these are written out simply on two typed up pieces of paper. And this would give the whole plan of the film that they were going to make. And you can see the cast is listed here. Very small cast, of course, these things. Jim Finlayson, who's famous from the cross-eyed actor in the later Laurel Hardy films. Babe Hardy, listed there by his nickname, not Oliver Hardy. And uh, Stan Laurel, who wrote all of these scripts and who was the creative genius behind the team. Do you see, again, in the, in the screenplays, or scenarios, I should properly say, they leave a great deal of room for uh, improvisation. At the end of this script, it says, from here we go into a wow finish and fade out. And there's all kinds of notes in here about casting decisions they may make. Um, they may cast a pretty girl or they may not. All these kind of notes are left in. Some of the films are longer. This one's four pages, giving all the, the details. So they're not scripts made after the film and taken down from the screen. They're actually the original scenarios as Laurel sent out his team to make the films. As we go through the films to the later films, they start to get more complicated and we start to get more details like this where we've got production, we've got specific days, we've got the wardrobe here, we've got the props needed and these are listed for all the scenes and it really becomes quite complicated. What had started out as a quite simple improvised thing has become complicated Later on, still, there are more scripts. There are 40 scripts here. So later on, we get really quite technical scripts with the timings of everything and all the fade-ins and fade-outs, and it becomes much more like a, a screenplay that we would recognize from a modern film. Some of these screenplays have got the names of the people whose copy this was. As I say, these are all the Hal Roach file copies, so they do come from that file, but this one is Mr. French, who is the production manager, and so this copy went to him. And some of the scripts have got the lists of the names of people that they went to. The script would go out, and then the script would be returned, and some of them are marked as file copies. You see here Mr. French's name. There's two file copies, actually. And also higher up the list, Mr. Roach, um, who was the owner of the company. And quite low down, of course, least important of all, the actors, <laughs> Laurel and Hardy, are quite low down. But they would take the script out with them and uh, work on it, work from it. 
So most of these scripts must have been destroyed. They don't turn up. They're not, uh, we haven't found them in commerce. They're not in libraries. They're not in uh, film institutes. These, as far as we can see, uh, represents the only archive, the only surviving archive of this early golden period of Lauren Hardy's career. And it ends a little sadly in a way with the full length feature film they made, Babes in Toyland. And here is the script dated July the 28th, 1934. Um, Babes in Toyland is a film that, uh, uh, again, this is Mr. French's copy. He's got his label now. By this stage, they've got labels. Um, but actually, it's the copy given out uh, to Bob Sanders, the props, props man for the movie. And he's marked it up with various things where he needs both of them there the kind of props that he's going to use, cuts that have been made, all kinds of information about Babes in Toyland. Babes in Toyland was the final film in the relationship between Laurel and Hardy and the Hal Roach studio because Hal Roach wasn't happy with the script. He suggested various changes. Stan Laurel didn't like that. And uh, he left. Uh, he took the talent away. He, he, he joined another company. And they were never quite the same. Um, that golden age was ended um, with the argument over this script. So here are some of the key scripts for some of the key moments of the golden age of early Hollywood comedy. There is full description of the archive on the Peter Harrington website, and there are contact details where you can get in touch if you want further details of this amazing collection.